Hello, everybody. Thanks for joining. We're going to get started in a minute. While we're waiting, Don from Hewlett Packard Enterprise has shared a bunch of links uh, in the chat bar, so feel free to check them out. And uh, make sure that they're still there. Are they still there? Because I had a, a little blip here with Zoom. And Don, I still see them, so I believe they're still up in the chat window. Excellent. And you can see my screen, I hope. Hey, everybody. Thanks for joining. We're going to give uh, a minute or two to start the presentation. Uh, in the interim, there are a bunch of links in the chat for you to check out. Oh, it looks like um, maybe they're not in there to the new attendees. So I'll go ahead and post those right now. Oh, thank you. Okay, the links are up uh, in the chat. So let me know if you still don't see them. Looks like it works. Great. Thank you. And we'll get started in a minute. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. I want to thank everybody for joining us today to uh, the webinar Building Dynamic Machine Learning Pipelines with Cube Director, presented by Hewlett Packard Enterprise. Our presenters today are Tom Phelan, a fellow at Software Organization, and Kartik Mather, Master Technologist, and Don Wake, Technical Marketing Engineer. A few housekeeping items before we get started. Um, as an attendee, you're not able to talk during the presentation, um, but you are able to ask questions down at the bottom of your screen in the Q&A tab. We'll be ask, answering those questions at the end of the presentation. Um, also, um, this webinar is subject to the CNCF Code of Conduct, so please be mindful of what you say in the chat or the questions, and please be respectful of your fellow attendees as well as the presenters. The webinar um, and recording will be up later today on the CNCF webinar page, uh, and with that, I will pass it over um, to um, Don, Kartik, and Tom. Great, thanks a lot, Julius. Uh, I'm Don Wake, and I guess I'll have each guy uh, wave so you know who they are. Tom, go ahead and say hi. Hello, everyone. And there's Kartik right there. Hey, everyone. I love your shirt, Kartik. Got me milk. He is in. Hey, I thought yeah. at first it said Got Milk. I'm like, dude, why are you wearing a Got Milk shirt? No, it's no, Got ML. It. Uh, yeah. Yep. You got to pay attention to details here. Okay, so let's move along. So we're going to talk about building uh, dynamic uh, machine learning pipelines. So. Machine learning, you know, what, what, is, uh, what is it all about when you're deploying an enterprise artificial intelligence application? And how do you do that at scale? And 
you know, what kind of tools do you have available to do all these things? Um, number one, it's a very complex uh, thing to set up, execute, and operationalize, as is quoted here on the right uh, by Gartner, over 60% of the models uh, may be developed with the intention of, you know, getting answers from them, but they quickly grow to a level of complexity that's hard to manage. Um, the data sets change frequently, so it becomes hard to keep your machine learning pipeline, you know, dynamic and up to, up to speed. Um, and then Kubernetes, obviously, is the tool of choice that everybody's using to uh, orchestrate, manage their containers, um, but it also is fairly complex. Um, so what can uh, we do to help, uh, you know, improve um, the usability of your machine learning pipelines? So that's what we're going to talk about today. We've got our overview, um, stateless and stateful applications will be discussed uh, briefly. What Kube Director is really the subject of this webinar and how it is used uh, to help you build these dynamic machine learning pipelines. Uh, what, what you do when you're creating these clusters of Kube Director apps called KD clusters. And then once you have your clusters, how you use them to train your ML model, register the model, create an inference deployment and uh, serve queries to get answers. So let's jump right in. Go ahead, Tom. Hey, thanks, Don. So as uh, Don pointed out, we're talking today about ML pipelines and the use of Kubernetes to deploy and control those pipelines. But before we can begin, we have to actually look at the application types that are involved in that pipeline of applications. Now, as we all know, Kubernetes is best used or is most designed for stateless applications. And when we say stateless applications, what do we mean? We mean an application that is designed for the, from the ground up as a microservices architected application. That means the storage, the state of the application is separate from the compute instance that is running. So when we use containers, we can horizontally scale the compute. So we bring on more and more containers running in parallel in order to run our application more quickly. So we get to an answer more quickly in the ML parlance. These are typically referred to as cattle because any of these containers can be killed, can be exited, can move around, and they don't lose the state of the overall application. This is key when we think about the applications that we're using to build our pipeline. So Don, let's go to the next now. We'll contrast stateless applications with stateful applications. Stateful applications typically are legacy applications. They may come from the 80s, the 90s, the early 2000s, before the industry embraced cloud native architecture, microservices solutions, and that sort of thing. So what these applications have is they tend to co-mingle state with compute. Now, with Kubernetes, we spoke about with stateless applications, there's a separation of compute and storage. But with stateful applications, there's some metadata. There might be a little bit of configuration information that's unique for each container that's running a portion of the compute for that application. If that container exits, there can be a loss of state, so a loss of continuity that has to be kind of rebuilt when we spin up a new instance to replace that missing instance of the container. These are referred to as pets. So even there, they're horizontally scalable. There's kind of a separation of compute and storage, but if you lose a running instance of a container, you have to be careful on how you bring it back to life. That's because each pet is unique. So even though there's a hundred or a thousand cats that look much like your own pet, your pet's unique because it has a different personality. So uh, when we talk about these applications, and Karthik will get into more detail about the specific applications that are used here, these applications tend to be a little bit stateful, but not entirely stateless. So we have to be careful as we assemble our pipeline. So Don, can you move forward, please? And Kubernetes, the open source community, like I said earlier, um, Kubernetes was originally designed for stateless applications but there's been a lot of progress over the years. Um, various items and, and resources like objects and pools, stateful sets. I already mentioned persistent volumes, persistent volume claims. 
concept of an operator or a custom resource definition is a specific piece of Go code that helps manage stateful applications a little more easily, but they can be cumbersome. But Don, let's go forward. That's why we're introducing Cube Director. And let me, let me just back up a moment uh, in full disclosure to the audience. Uh, myself and Kartik, we come uh, originally from a startup company known as Blue Data. Uh, Blue Data was acquired by HP Enterprise a few years ago. When we were at uh, Blue Data, we specialized in running artificial intelligence, machine learning, deep learning applications in containers on Kubernetes. What we found is that the existing tool set for setting up pipelines of stateful applications didn't really meet our needs. And so we uh, instituted this or kicked off this Cube Director open source project under the auspices of the CNCF. And so that's what we're gonna be talking about today. Uh, there's a link here on the slides. If you want to go to our GitHub site, publicly available, go ahead and uh, uh, you know, uh, begin to, to play around with, with the Cube Director. So Don, let's just one more, one more time forward, please. We'll do, and just real quick, this link, uh, I pasted it into okay. the uh, chat window, so you can go to that. It's, called, it's labeled Cube Director Code, if you'd like to see the source. Thank you very much. Um, so Karthik, I'll turn it over to you to talk about how we support legacy applications with Cube Director. Thanks a lot, Tom. So Tom talked about uh, stateful and stateless application. Uh, and he talked about, you know, if you want to configure legacy application, how the state is very important. Uh, and we don't even have to go that far, even if you take an example of something like Hadoop. It's a classical example, uh, you know, of a stateful application where, where a lot of services are dependent on, uh, you know, on, on one service, like uh, in, in the Hadoop world, a lot of services depend on Zookeeper. So they need to know the state of Zookeeper until the Zookeeper, how many nodes are there, where are they running, what are the addresses, until the Zookeeper is not up, they cannot start configuration. So uh, that's a very good use case for something like Cube Director, uh, you know. So how do we achieve it? Uh, we uh, maintain a in-cluster uh, data structure, uh, which gives you a cluster level view, which tells you what services are running, how many pods are there for every role, uh, uh, so that you know uh, a service A, uh, which needs to talk to service B, can look at this data structure and do the orchestration accordingly. So that data structure we call as a config metadata, and that is managed by Cube Director and is constantly updated as the state of the cluster changes. Uh, we also have some lifecycle uh, events, what we call as guest config hooks. You know, uh, basically they tells uh, any service what's happening in the cluster. Is the cluster being being expanded? Is it being shrunk? Right, nodes are being added or deleted, and then the config metadata data structure is updated, and then the service can uh, react accordingly. Uh, and all that uh, orchestration layer is what we call as app config, which relies heavily on uh, config metadata and guest config hooks. And for for any service to query this data structure, there is a nice little tool which uh, Cube Director injects uh, when whenever a pod comes up, and that tool is Config CLI. Uh, sure. Let's keep going. Okay. I think Tom, you were going to talk to us about this yeah. sort of how you deploy it. Good. Uh, so I mean, we may have been remiss. Just to be clear, Cube Director is a Kubernetes custom resource definition itself. It's an operator. It's a piece of Go code that is deployed, installed within a Kubernetes cluster. And then what you can do with it is you submit a JSON file or a YAML file to that operator. And then it will manage the instantiation and the life cycle of that stateful application on Kubernetes. So with here we have with our, our cube code standard com command, we are deploying a deployment of cube director in our Kubernetes cluster. What we're showing here with the little graphic is that you have the Cube Director operator. It has, a, a, when you're specifying a, a application to be deployed and managed by a Kube Director, you provide a definition of that. 
has some, it will go, and we'll go through examples in the following slides. It will define an image. It will locate an image from the image repository. It will specify connection information. It will specify configuration information, uh, scalable roles information about that application. You apply it to the cube director. Cube director will deploy it. If you wish to update it, you use cube call again. You, you pass in a new configuration file and cube director will do the reconciliation. So it will bring the running instance of the cluster of the application into alignment with the new configuration specification from the YAML file. This is standard, standard operator behavior for a Kubernetes cluster, but what we're providing is we're providing a solution to allow you to run any stateless application without having to write your own operator. All you have to do is specify some JSON or YAML, provide it to the cube director, and cube director will do that for you. So I'll pass it back to Karthik to, to go through some more detail in this regard. Yeah, and uh, just to give you an overview before Karthik talks about the, um, the, uh, the applications, KD apps, um, you know, just a level set. I think everybody on this call knows what we're talking about with a basic machine learning pipeline. Uh, this is what we're going to be uh, working towards building out with Kube Director. We have the training, we have input data sets, registration of your model once it's created, um, all of that circling around some central uh, persistent storage repository where you have your data prepped and stored and accessible by the clusters, um, and then where the models themselves are made available for inferencing. So, uh, Kartik, take it away. Sure. Uh, thanks, Don. Thank you, Tom. So let's talk about Cube Director application. Uh, so we already know now by now that Cube Director is is a Kubernetes operator. In Kubernetes operator world, you have a custom resource definition (CRDs) and then instantiation of those are custom resource. So Cube Director application is a generic, uh, you know, CRD. Uh, it's a, it's where all the expressiveness for any giving app application comes. Uh, where without writing any Go code, uh, an application developer can define what is the application uh, gonna look like. Uh, we will be going deeper into that. Like we will be, they can define things like roles, uh, what services are in a roles, cardinality, and a lot of other things. So that uh, uh, custom resource is the Cube Director application, and we will be looking at some examples for those. Uh, for this presentation specifically, we will be focusing on three Cube Director applications. Uh, one is your uh, training application, uh, your Jupyter application, and then finally a deployment application. And then how we st stitch them together using some Cube Director uh, features like uh, connections. Awesome. And uh, again, we also pasted a link that you see on this slide in the chat. Um, so look uh, for the label GitHub example applications. You'll see exactly uh, the code that we are going to be walking through, which is right here. So back to you, Carter. Yes. Uh, okay. So this is a concrete example of a Cube Director application. Uh, we will be focusing on the green blocks. Uh, that's the areas of more interest. So now, uh, Cube Director knows about this custom resource called Cube Director application. What it is entirely depends on the application developer. They can define what roles, uh, you know, for every role. Uh, behind the scene, Cube Director uh, creates stateful sets for every role uh, to, you know, convert into the Kubernetes uh, uh, native resource. For every role, uh, you can define a bunch of services, and for every service, you can attach metadata. All that uh, definition happens in the Cube Director application JSON. Uh, this can be a YAML as well. Uh, in KS world, they are used interchangeably. So if, if we focus on the first green block, uh, we are defining uh, our role. What is the cardinality means? You know, just one part for that particular role. And, and the heart of that is package URL, uh, where you give your orchestration code. So Cube Director uh, invokes uh, these scripts once the pod is launched for that role and all the business logic, uh, how to configure whatever service you need to configure in that particular pod uh, is happening here. And this is actively using the config metadata using config CLI utility to happening what's uh, to know what's happening in uh, rest of the cluster. Uh, and then it also takes an image uh, that's a Docker image. Uh, so Second uh, green block is pretty similar, just talking about another role. Uh, uh, 
uh, which is a different image. In this particular example, we have three roles using three different images. Uh, every role has its own kind of an orchestration layer, uh, which uh, you supply using package URL. Um, and finally, uh, you have these bunch of endpoints under services defined, and you can uh, you know, tell Cube Director something more about those services that I want the service to be secured using a property called has auth token. Uh, once you do that, Cube Director generates a unique uh, uh, token or auth authentication token or identifier uh, so that anybody who's trying to hit that endpoint will have to supply that uh, authentication token in the HTTP header. Uh, and then inside the pod, you can write the logic to verify if that token is correct. Um, so, so a lot of those features uh, Cube Director out of the box supplies, which uh, which people don't have to write again and again from different operators, which would, uh, which is kind of uh, how it happens outside of Cube Director. Like if you're writing Kafka, if you're writing Cassandra, Mongo, or some machine learning application, you have to keep rewriting a lot of day to code, right? Uh, all that is taken care of behind the scene by Cube Director. Awesome, thanks Kartik. So it really shows how you're starting to wrangle um, the difficulties that you run into um, building these complex machine learning pipelines. So here, here's an example of a pipeline that we're gonna use. And again, even the, the data sets for this is available on, uh, online at, the, at our GitHub, I believe is, we linked that as well. Um, so the problem description and an artificial intelligence application that has to predict the travel time for a proposed taxi ride. So we're gonna take this huge data set from years and years of compiled data uh, in New York. And then uh, we're gonna allow the user to query specific points A to B to C and, and figure out what the average uh, travel time would be. So back to you, uh, Carter. So I think this I just Tom. Go, Tom, just yeah, go go quickly, I'll just go ahead through this. So Don, thanks for setting up the, the demonstration we're going to show today. So Kartik has already talked a little bit about three components. We saw those in the YAML file. So let me just kind of piece this together. So as Don points out, what we're going to do is going to build a model. We're going to build a neural net model that will allow us to predict travel time by taxi from point A to point B. So what we need to do is we need to train a model. So we will deploy a training cluster. That training cluster typically will be deployed using on, on resources using GPUs because GPUs are more efficient when training a model. Now, we also need to deploy an inference model. Inference typically runs better on regular CPUs, doesn't need the special power of the GPU. So we'll have two different specifications. We'll have a specification for our training engine, we'll have a specification for our deployment model our deployment engine. And then we'll also have a Jupyter Notebook, as Kartik points out. And why do we have a Jupyter Notebook? Because it's easy for the data scientist. They're familiar with the Jupyter Notebook in order to interact with the training cluster and train it appropriately given the data sets that we will be using. So what we're showing here in this little box is the three cube cuddle commands that deploy the specification for each of these components that we'll be using in our pipeline, our app training engine, our Jupyter Notebook, and our deployment engine. So what's gonna be shown in the next few slides here is how we assemble these, how we share data between the training engine and the deployment engine. And that's the real power of Cube Director. So I'll spend it back to, to Karthik. Thanks, Tom. So now we are looking at the second, uh, you know, important, custom resource uh, that Cube Director manages, uh, which is a Cube Director cluster. So Cube Director application is kind of a template, is a very static thing where you define a bunch of you know, uh, mappings about with, between roles and services and service to endpoints. Uh, this, is, uh, this is the more interesting part uh, which Cube Director manages, is the instantiation of that particular Cube Director application. Uh, you can create uh, one or many Cube Director cluster and Cube Director is uh, constantly watching this custom resource called Cube Director cluster, uh, and anything that's happening in the cluster is reacting to the change. So a uh, Cube Director cluster uh, relative to Cube Director application uh, looks relatively simple in terms of you know just if you look at the YAML, here you just already predefined your application, which in this case in inside spec is training engine, inside that. Uh, 
you've already defined your roles while defining the app. So now all you're doing is for every role, you're asking for how many members and what's the resource for every role. Uh, for this, this presentation, uh, we, are, we don't have GPU YAML, but it can, you can provide uh, GPU while requesting for a resource. So, uh, yes. Okay. Now on to connections, I guess, what we're, how, you, how you use that between the clusters. Yes, exactly. So now uh, this goes back to our, the title for this presentation is building dynamic pipeline, right? Like there are two, two keywords there, pipeline and dynamic. Uh, and that's, that's the connection is at the heart of that. Uh, pipeline means you are stitching together a bunch of things. Uh, in this particular case, you're stitching together a bunch of cube director clusters. Uh, those are unrelated cluster and how do they cluster knows about each other is through this cube director feature called connection. Uh, we talked about the data structure called config meta. Uh, if you want to extend config meta to have information of other running cluster, that's what connection lets you do. If you focus on this YAML here in the spec, there is connection and then you take two config maps. Uh, when you do that, uh, cube director reads those config map, get the data and sticks it inside your running clusters config metadata. So now this cluster also knows about uh, those config map. And as those config maps are changing, uh, this metadata is changing and services can react accordingly. The, using connection, uh, we have currently implemented uh, three resources like a secret can be a connection config map uh, or, or another KD cluster. But the idea is more broad or generic. Uh, you can have more resources in future uh, in Cube Director. You can extend Cube Director to have another custom resource, which is, uh, which is an operator in itself or another CR to, to be a connection. Uh, once you do that, then this cluster will know a lot more about what's happening there. Um, and, and as those things are changing, this cluster is constantly evolving and reacting to the change. And that's, that's how we get the dynamic part of it. So in this, this is a, a very simplistic pipeline. Uh, uh, if you have observed like in actual machine learning, you have, you can drill down on every step, like training itself will do a lot of data, munging data, pre-processing. All of them can be separate running cluster in themselves uh, and using connections, you can tie them all together into a nice pipeline. Awesome, all right. Um, so this is what we're going to build. Um, we, I think we've laid out the foundation for, you know, what the problem statement is at the end of the day, as Kartik just mentioned, we're going to have three clusters, uh, individual clusters doing individual jobs that are all part of the pipeline. Um, so we'll build this out step by step. Um, you can see at the top there is a persistent storage layer. Um, that's where our taxi uh, ride data set will be, uh, that the training cluster will read. Um, that will train from eventually get our model stored in that same place, which can be accessed by the Jupyter Notebook and by the inferencing deployment engine um, using also storage uh, scoring scripts in the, in the persistent storage. So let's jump right in and get this sucker built. So now we're looking at the Cube Director training app and we've been talking about different Cube, Cube Director app and cluster. So it's a simple Cube cut you create for people familiar with uh, KHS or Kubernetes. Uh, you just do a kubectl create or apply of a given YAML and the Kubernetes will take care of creating and managing that resource once we have registered that resource. So this will uh, create your first block in the pipeline, which is, uh, which is the actual training engine where the training computation will happen. Okay. Let's keep going down. So we built the ML training as promised. We're going to kind of slowly build this picture out. So there's our taxi ride mm -hmm. data set. There's our kube director cluster. Right, and, and now comes uh, the most interesting part for data scientists, which is the Jupyter Notebook, uh, which is uh, a Cube Director application in itself. Uh, so Jupyter Not Notebook is the most popular kind of an interface for, for people doing machine learning uh, or any data science -y, uh, problem solving. Uh, in, in the same spirit, like Cube Director, uh, like Jupyter Notebook, uh, they can come up with any any notebook. It could be Zeppelin or some something else, uh, which which they are more familiar with. Uh, for this example, we have taken Jupyter Notebook. Uh, now you have this lightweight notebook, and you have this beefy uh, training cluster. Using connections, uh, multiple people 
or data scientists can just spawn this lightweight notebooks uh, and connect it to the training cluster. Uh, and we have extended the notebook uh, as part of uh, the Cube Director examples uh, to utilize uh, this connection so that you can remotely submit your code. Whatever you're doing in Jupyter Notebook will not be executed locally uh, and can be then posted on a training cluster so that you get access to the beefier resources, uh, more GPUs. So we've got the kind of beefy cluster over here that's got physical resources potentially with GPUs. So you can do a lot of that hardcore, um, you know, machine learning. And then as you mentioned, you got the, just with this, a couple kubeco uh, create commands and, and definition files, you've got a connection between the, the lighter weight uh, Jupyter notebook the data scientist is using and accessing, uh, kicking off, you know, managing this, this cluster. Mm -hmm. So this, I guess, uh, talks about, talk about how the Jupyter Notebook itself, you know, utilizes that connection. Right. So here now, uh, as I mentioned in last slide, uh, we have done some, uh, some, we have added some intelligence to Jupyter Notebook uh, about the feature that we, we have been talking about called connections. Uh, there is a functionality in Jupyter Notebook where it gives you some hooks to extend the interface. Uh, those hooks are called magics. Uh, we have defined our own magic. Uh, in, so like you see percentage attachments, that's a, that's a line magic uh, that runs some code behind the scenes uh, to get all the metadata for a given connection. In this case, it tells you what, what is your training cluster. Again, you can continue to add more training cluster using connection uh, snippet to your notebook. And when, when you rerun this uh, magic, you will see more than one here if you have added more or you can remove. So all that is a very real time. And then as you are bringing and removing cluster, you can then try your training example on different cluster just by sitting in one notebook session. Great. So we actually had a question there um, that came in from Rock about, you know, what is the Jupyter Notebook? And hopefully that, what we just showed, um, gives you an idea of how the Jupyter Notebook is sort of, I mean, how would you call it, Tom, the Cardic? It's, it's really what runs the show. It's, it's your direct interface to your abstract model. You know, we're doing all the hard plumbing in the background, but here are your Jupyter Notebooks, you know, really building the model or allowing you to, to make things happen, right? Right. It's just, it, it traditionally used to be called IPython notebooks. Uh, now it's called Jupyter Notebook. It, uh, they continue to add more and more features. It can give you uh, authentication with external uh, ADL dev servers. Uh, there is concept of Jupyter Lab. So this is, uh, this is a very nice uh, tool, industry standard, uh, which is constantly evolving for data scientists. And that's why it's very popular. Uh, predominantly used for writing Python code. But with the example uh, we, we have shown, even when you are in a Python kernel for a notebook using magics, you can put your R code and we will just take that code and post it on an R kernel or, or in some other language. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks. Okay. So, you know, we're building out our pipeline here, showing the training engine now uh, with the connections. Actually, now we actually see a, a, a model also being stored in that central persistent storage library. So now the config map. Mm -hmm. So uh, a model can be, you know, it's, it's very subjective concept. Uh, it depends on library, what you're using. Once you have a model to be able to deploy that uh, in a proper productionalized pipeline, you need to serialize the model. And then you need some runtime which can deserialize the model uh, and then can basically give an endpoint uh, which people can hit and make inferences. For us, uh, we have uh, we have represented model in in, in a KTS uh, resource type, which is very popular config map, which is nothing but a key value structure. Here, uh, you can provide the path of your serialized model. Uh, where did you store your model on persistent storage uh, using the training cluster uh, you, as part of the training job? And then the intelligence about that model, how, what, what libraries was that model serialized with, uh, how to deserialize that model, how to plug in new input to, to that model. That goes in, in a script called scoring, uh, which, uh, which people who are interested in deploying this model will have to write. Uh, and we maintain that where the scoring script is and where the model is in this config map. Again, we will be using connection feature uh, while creating deployment cluster uh, to make deployment engine aware of 
what models you have to deploy and what to do do with them. Great. So we've uh, now gotten to this point and almost have the full thing built. Uh, we've got our config Mac built, and now we're going to create uh, an inference server deployment. Right. So now uh, deployment engine is is uh, is in that first block in the pipeline is number third block where you have your training, you have your notebook, uh, you have your uh, config map which which represents your model. Now finally you want to deploy it. So again, bring up a deployment agent, uh, engine which has the compute libraries uh, to run the scoring script uh, and then just connect it with the with the config map. Uh, and that's what we're doing here. We defined a model in config map. We use connections to let the deployment engine know about that model. And I see here it says kube director can inject the contents of config map into the JSON file within the clusters. App. Exactly. And that's, that's what uh, the connection feature is essentially. Um, whatever is connected, Cube Director will uh, be constantly watching that for you. As things are changing there, it will be reading that and getting the contents and sticking it inside your config metadata. And you have config CLI, which you can constantly query. Uh, on top of that, we also give uh, the lifecycle event hooks, uh, which tells uh, that you know things have changed here. Do you want to reconfigure? Do you want to make use of this new model available? So all that is happening and changing real time and things are constantly evolving. Uh, that's, that's how this uh, dynamicity of this pipeline. Fantastic. So what would you say is happening here? This, this is finally, you have your ML pipeline running. Uh, you, you have published an endpoint, uh, whatever that model was. In this particular example, uh, people are interested in predicting uh, to go from point A to point B how much time I'm going to take in uh, based on the training data set, which was for New York City. So while training the model, uh, these were the interesting features to the data scientist, uh, you know, uh, let long, uh, you know, day of the week. So we ask you for this, you give us new input for a deployed model uh, uh, using the pipeline, it will uh, go to deployment engine, you plug it in, uh, and then it will give make some prediction for you. So at the end of the day, 1,679 seconds is the answer. Yes. Uh, yeah, it's no, not the most optimized model. Uh, <laughs> no, it, it, it's actually fantastic because this is really demonstrating everything. This is coming yeah, from the yes, perspective yes. of the user from some URL anywhere into this model. And after a few simple inputs, you get the outputs. Of course, this is, a, as you mentioned before, a simplified yeah. model. But for demonstration exactly. purposes. Exactly. And this is just making a REST, REST API call to the deployed model uh, on the published URL. Uh, it could be an RPC call. Uh, instead of Python, you can write a REST client in, you can use some Postman or you can use any REST client to consume the model up to the end user. Okay, so that brings it all full circle. Um, and it looks like we've got lots of more things to kind of tell people about that this is a very live uh, open source project with more to come. Right, so this project, uh, uh, for this example, we are showcasing how you can build dynamic machine learning pipelines. But, but this project is much more than that. It is uh, trying to solve uh, the problem of uh, rewriting operators every day for, for every uh, application. And whatever the common day to operation is, we are trying to take care of that uh, and, and bake it inside Cube Director. So we can, we will continue to enhance this uh, based on, you know, uh, what are, what use cases we are seeing. So like, like we mentioned, the concept of model is very simplistic right now. It's just a config map, but it can be a CR in itself and it can have much more intelligence and we can constantly uh, monitor that uh, better uh, once we define that as a CR. So we are brainstorming about that. Uh, we will be uh, enriching our uh, example catalog, uh, uh, which already has quite a few applications, but we will be adding more, something like distributed and the flow to utilize GPUs. Uh, we can add more CR, which are uh, basically makes this pipeline more richer by adding things like model registry, data set management and feature engineering sort of application in the mix. Uh, the, the 
secret is already better than config map because it's base64 encoded, but still we want to be further solidify that and encrypt those uh, so that inside the pod, uh, people cannot just decode it, who has, who can, whoever can do kubectl exec inside the pod. So we're working on that. Uh, there, there are policies for role scaling, uh, placement constraints. There, there are a whole bunch of things that we're all already working on. So all those uh, issues are listed in the URL on. Uh, people can just go there, um, take a look, start contributing, ask questions. Yeah, I was just going to say uh, con contributions. That's the beauty of this. It's an open source project. These are the things that we have seen kind of as the experts and founders. But I guess, Tom, is there more you would say there as well? It's, we, it, this is open source, right? Well, absolutely. It's completely, uh, you know, we are trying to get it into incubation stage. So HP is in the process of, you know, uh, going through the process with CNCF to get that done. And then, of course, we'll move through the pathway uh, to a fully, fully supported and released open source project within CNCF. But please don't don't let that slow you down. Uh, we'd love to build out the community of developers. Uh, the more people we have working on this, the better. The uh, more quickly we can enhance it to add additional functionality. Awesome. And Kartik, what is this? Uh, we have a, basically all the examples we showed you and a whole lot more available there. Also pasted in the chat, right? Right. So we are constantly uh, updating the open source project with more and more applications. Uh, uh, internal teams are building uh, and outside folks are also continuing to build and uh, add more and more. So we have already built quite a few to start with a legacy kind of, uh, you know, if you call Hadoop legacy today, uh, using cloud era distribution that is there using MAPR, uh, you know, Kafka. It's, it's, it could be a huge pain to write an operator for something like Kafka, right? Uh, we, we have tried to solve that by having a cube director application uh, which takes care of Kafka. Uh, we have quite a few machine learning kind of application like uh, TensorFlow. Uh, Spark is another very popular one which can be used in the machine learning areas as well as uh, for compute um, and, and many more. And this will we'll continue to add more and more here. Yeah, I just wanted to point out um, similar to how um... You know, Blue Data was uh, acquired by HPE. We've also acquired what uh, is very popular in the machine learning from the data perspective, uh, MapR, which is why I see MapR 610. That is uh, rebranded as the Esmeral Data Fabric, and it's integrated into um, the HPE container platform as well. So that uh, completes our uh, presentation of all of our data. We've got our Twitter handles here, so you guys can bother us. Uh, please bother us as much as you like. We'd love to, you know, we love this stuff. We're the nerds. Um, we have a Slack channel. Um, you can reach us on email. The blog post um, is also posted there in the chat. And there was a question also about, you know, when can you get this actual presentation? And I think and Julius could even uh, answer that when that'll be available. Um, but, you know, Tom, take us back to the beginning here. Wrap it up. Sure. Uh, thanks, Don. So what we remember when we spoke about in the very beginning is the difference between stateful and uh, stateless applications, uh, use of Kubernetes and the creation of a pipeline. So what we've demonstrated today is with TensorFlow and the Jupyter Notebooks, you can use KubeDirector without having to write your own operator for TensorFlow or Jupyter. KubeDirector by itself, you know, passing the YAML files as we provided here, is able to deploy and manage those applications. Um, it doesn't have to be TensorFlow. It could be Spark. could be something else. As, as uh, Kartik pointed out, uh, we're adding some additional examples of YAML files, but uh, we'd love to have other people jump in and provide those YAMLs uh, showing how you can run other stateful applications with, Kuber, with KubeDirector on Kubernetes. And that'll help us to, to, to demonstrate more usefulness of this uh, open source project, not only for pipeline deployment for machine learning, but for all types of applications. Awesome, and uh, we've been trying to keep up with some of the questions. Please uh, go ahead and type them in right now to the chat or, or the q and A. I'm not seeing the Q&A pop up. I don't know, Julius, you could take over on Q&A or? Yeah, so everybody uh, feel free to ask your questions down at the bottom uh, right of your screen in the Q&A tab, or bottom three quarters right of the screen. So we've already got one um, from Steven. 
How does this relate to uh, interact with uh, Kubeflow in the concept of ML ops as this will be also available in Esmeral CP? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, Tom, do you want to answer that? Uh, yeah, Karchik, why don't you handle that one? You're an expert on Kubeflow, please. Yes. Uh, so yeah, since you mentioned uh, Esmeral CP, uh, uh, I can briefly answer that, but uh, Cube Director is more of a you know open source project in itself, so it's it's pretty extendable in terms of who do you want it to use it along with. Uh, but specifically in ECP, uh, we have plans in coming releases to tie it nicely with Kubeflow, where you, Cube Director application can be for you know uh, your uh, starting point, uh, where where you are building your application, coming up with a pipeline. Uh, then you want to take it to next level where Kubeflow already has a richer components in terms of hyperparameter tuning using Kati, more kind of uh, workflows using uh, Argo. Uh, you can utilize that. And how to bridge them together is first you need a common storage. Uh, so we are trying to solve that problem because Kubeflow uh, solves the problem of uh, storage slightly differently where every user has its own kind of persistent volume, uh, which is not the case in Kube Director. So in ECP specifically, we will try to solve in terms of, you know, how Cube Director user, depending on what tenant they belong to, can get the tenant storage. Once they have access to the common storage uh, and they get serialized model, then you can start probably if you train the model in Cube Director, you can deploy it using Selden or KF serving on Kubeflow side. And that's kind of a nice, uh, nice bridging. Uh, so those kind of things we are already working on. Uh, you should see some of them released in uh, future releases. Let me just uh, thank you, Carl. Let me just a couple of things here. So just for, for the audience's sake, uh, when we say ECP, that stands for Esmeral Container Platform. So, uh, and it's for full disclosure again, Esmeral Container Platform is an HPE provided product. It deploys and manages your applications on Kubernetes. What we have presented today is an open source solution called Cube Director that does work on the Esmeral container platform from Hewlett Packard Enterprise. However, you can also deploy Cube Director on any open source Kubernetes system. So we're, what we're showing is a general usage of that. And then there's a great question. So what's your plans? How are you going to integrate with, with Kubeflow? Are you planning to, to um, replace Kubeflow? And the answer is no. Kubeflow is a wonderful tool. Okay. We are going to augment Cube Director so that together these two tools provide the additional functionality, as Kartik pointed out. So, uh, and Julius, I don't know if you saw this other one that came through in the chat. Um, yep. That's, okay, go for it. The Spark uh, question. Oh, uh, in the chat. Let's yeah, see. I can get. I can take it. It's a. Is there a difference between using a Kube Director to manage Spark and the Spark operator? Yeah, that's a good question. And um, just now, Tom mentioned ECP. We also have Spark operator, but fundamentally, the difference is Spark operator is kind of more native to to Kubernetes. In the in the operator, we are not trying to say here that you know this is one size fits all. Like this can solve all kind of problem that all the operators are solving individually. No, this is more like a generic. You know, for if this does not serve your use case, then you evaluate. Can you make use of this, or do you have to write your own operator? So a Spark consumer, if they want. A uh, resource manager to be native Kubernetes, then they should use operator. But the application that we have uh, will have some resource manager as part of the virtual cluster, uh, which could be Yarn or which could be Spark standalone, right? Uh, because uh, Cube Director uh, is just launching uh, given for a given role pods, but it, more intelligent resourcing it leads to a resource manager and it relies on that. So, so that's where a specific operator like Spark operator uh, is kind of will be ahead of, of a Cube Director Spark application. Does it answer the question? Yeah, that one came in from, so. um, from Rock. So if he has a follow-up, um, we still have a few minutes. 
anybody has any questions. And um, another question, what, is, what are the advantages of Cube Director with network service mesh in providing connectivity among clusters? Tom, do you want to take that? Uh, I'm not entirely sure I understand the question. Um, okay, this, the service mesh is a way for uh, different applications to find out about each other and to connect, okay? Um, uh, I, I wouldn't say that Cube Director has an advantage over uh, network service mesh. Uh, it would use that. So when we deploy the inference cluster, or we deploy the uh, training cluster, it would register itself with the service mesh. And then uh, the, the pipeline would be assembled by querying the service mesh to get the endpoints for the components of the pipeline. Mm -hmm. Right, and just to clarify, the connection that Cube Director feature is not doing anything on the network layer. It's just basically, uh, it's it's giving the config metadata of different cluster to a given cluster. Uh, when you're talking about more like a service mesh, like Istio kind of thing. So yeah, it's definitely a very different concept from that. Uh, what we can do is using a Cube Director application can utilize something like a service mesh, like Istio, like Kubeflow already does. And we have been talking about that. So they will be complementary and not competing for sure. Great. Well, I hope that answered uh, your question. If not, please feel free to ask a follow up. Um, and yeah, if there are any more questions, please ask away down at the Q&A tab. I got one for Cardic. How do I get one of those shirts? That is just oh, these cool. shirts? Yeah, where'd you get that? That's too nuts. bad. Uh, I think we just, uh, it used to be in the Blue Data office. There used to be tons <laughs> of those. Uh, I think for one of the events, we came up with these. And then, if All right, we, well, well, we own no. that then, so we, we should no, just rebrand re it. I think we just got rid of that building. <laughs> <laughs> No, I mean we own we own got ML. We gotta just gotta right. have more more t-shirts that say that. That's just yeah, I think it's a standard swag for yeah. ResML container platform. Please, you know, next time we have a face-to-face -face conference and we're giving out t-shirts again, you know, come by, we'll happy to discuss and, and give out t-shirts. Absolutely. Okay. Well, if there's no more questions, we can go ahead and wrap up, but feel free to keep asking away. So I want to thank um, Tom, Kartik, and Don uh, for the great presentation and for the Q&A. Um, and we at the CNCF will have the slides uh, up uh, later today on the webinar page, cncf.com slash webinars. Um, and it looks like we have a question that just came in. Yeah. Um, is config CLI similar? Oh no, you answered. I that think one. I answered that. One. Oh, there we go. Um, could you please give a give a brief explanation about Cube Director and Cube Flow and their difference? Right, right. So Cube Director is uh, that's a great question actually. Uh, since we are talking about machine learning pipeline, uh, Cube Director is more of a generic operator and is not very specific to uh, you know, any particular stream like machine learning. Uh, it basically lets you build any kind of application. For this presentation, uh, we have utilized Cube Director to build an end-to-end -end machine learning pipeline. Kubeflow is an operator in itself, which lets you build these pipelines uh, and gives you various components, right? So it's a specific technology and for any technology, you can build an operator in Kubernetes world and that's what Kubeflow is. Uh, Cube Director might have some overlap, but essentially it's very different. Uh, you can, Cube Director lets you build your own application without writing any Go code. Uh, Kubeflow is an operator in itself. To extend it, you have to write Go code. Or to add more components uh, to Kubeflow operator, you have to bring in new operators in itself. Uh, while Cube Director is, is an operator where you don't have to write new operators, but uh, new CRs which is a Cube Director application for every new application. Great. 
Well, thank you guys for a great presentation. The webinar will be up later today on the CNCF webinar page. Uh, and I'd like to thank everybody for attending. Uh, have a great day, everybody. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Take care.